Let's overstate the obvious. There's nothing better than winning. Another second round game, another playoff release, another winner for yours truly. Golden State, yesterday, easy. Okay, not as easy as the Spurs beating up Oklahoma City by 32 points, but another wire-to-wire -wire cover as Golden State was up by 18 points early in that game. Never looked back, got the easy win and a double-digit victory as well. And again, just like the Spurs on Saturday, the Warriors. You got another top-rated 15-dime release from yours truly as the half-price play of the day. Again, just like the Spurs coming for you on Saturday. Just like uh, the Hawks in game number six on Thursday night, the Warriors in game number five on Wednesday, the Pacers in game number five against Toronto on Tuesday, and the Hornets in game four last Monday. As I continue to prove to you that you do not need to spend big money to make big money. Listen, there are still some guys out there that run those prehistoric 800 services. I thought they went away when the dinosaurs died, okay? But there are still guys out there ripping people off, and there are still suckers, gamblers out there, that really believe that they're paying for inside information or additional information to get winners. But if they had gone on the winning streak that I've been on in the last two weeks and here in my postseason start, oh my God, if they had started off at a base of $350 for the first play, yes. $250 to $350 they would have charged for that first play. It would have kept going up and up and up and up, and they would have been charging a grand per game. And again, you guys may laugh, but there are suckers out there that still spend that money for that type of play. I don't get it. So again, I've got another 15-dime top-rated NBA selection today. My 12th of the playoff postseason winner, number 11 of 13 overall. It's on the Cavaliers-Hawks opener. And it is, once again, the half-price play of the day. You can get that, the details, all the coupon codes, etc. Over on the homepage, doing this video for you at uh, 11.45 Eastern Time here. Hey, better than the one I did for you on Sunday at 2.30 in the morning. My hours are definitely improving. Uh, before I get to your free play today on Game 2 of the uh, Spurs uh, Thunder Series, let me just talk about how the favorites continue their domination in the postseason. They are now 29-17 and 17 overall. The two first-round games that were series that were concluding yesterday, that was, of course, a split. The Heat getting the job done, finishing that first-round series, the home team 5-2 and two against the spread in that series. And, of course, Indiana Pacers, who I gave you as a free play here, stay within the number as I thought they would as the road dog. Then the second-round game, of course, my best bet on the Warriors. The second-round favorites are 2-for-2 two two so far, thanks to the Spurs and the Warriors. And, again, the Chalks are 29-17 and 17 overall so far in this postseason. There have been 30 double-digit blowouts, two more yesterday, by, of course, the Warriors in the Heat, and 27 of them have been registered by favorites. The under is 30-15-1 in the postseason. 30-15-1 and one is the under. But the only game to go over yesterday was the second-round clash with the Warriors and Saturday's game with the Spurs went over as well. So 30-15-1, but 2-0 over so far here in the second round. Home teams in the first round of the postseason, 21-17 and against the spread. Home teams off to a 2-0 start here in the second round of action. Okay, guys, listen, I went with the Spurs. They won by 32 points on Saturday. That was my 15-time best bet. I like them here in game number two tonight, but not nearly as much, and that's why the game between the Cavaliers and the Hawks is my best bet today. I'm relegating this to a free pick selection. 124 to 92 was your final. It wasn't even that close. I mean, listen, after the first quarter, that was game, set, match. I didn't have to watch the rest of that game. Spurs were up 43 to 20. They shot almost 61% from the field. And as I detailed in my analysis for that game, you know, Leonard and Aldridge give the Spurs a one-two punch that they haven't had in previous postseason encounters with the Thunder. And you saw how hot Aldridge was. Season high, 38 points, 18 for 23 shooting. Meanwhile, Leonard, 25 points, five assists, and five rebounds. And he only played 22 minutes. And let me emphasize again to you how important the playing time is for an aging squad like the Spurs. Sure, Leonard's a young guy. Aldridge is a young guy. But in their four-game sweep of the Memphis Grizzlies, other than in game number three, Basically, you had most of the key performers, Ginobili and Parker and Duncan and Aldridge and Leonard, all sitting on the bench for most of the fourth quarter of those games. Same thing in game number one. 
No one is being overtaxed. And that's so important for San Antonio as they continue their playoff ride, especially with the Golden State Warriors probably waiting there in the future. Uh, Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook, just awful games in game number one. A combined 11 for 34 from the field. Durant was 16, Westbrook with 14. I also pointed out in my analysis packing the Spurs in game number one as a premium play that the key defensive matchup, G, you didn't have to go to MIT to figure this out, was Leonard against Durant. Leonard's ever-improving offensive game gives him such an advantage in that one-on-one -on -one matchup because Durant is a great offensive player, but he's not known for his defense, but here... He's got to play honest ball at both ends of the floor because of Leonard's, again, improving offensive game. You know, you look during the regular season meetings and Durant, a prolific scorer if there ever was one. But when Leonard was playing him in the four regular season games, well, he only shot 15 of 38. That's a little above 39 percent, well under his regular season average. Meanwhile, when Durant was guarding Leonard, Leonard Shot 54% in the four regular season games, hitting 20 of 37 from the field. So, if you're the Thunder, what do you do? Well, you're going to expect Westbrook and Durant to have bounce back games. As I pointed out, though, going into this series, you know, one of the advantages they had, well, they had two advantages against Dallas. One, the Mavericks were an aging, injury-riddled team that could barely field a starting unit that wasn't worthy outside of Dirk Nowitzki and Wesley Matthews of not being in the... Uh, a developmental league. I mean, it was a D-League team. Basically, the Mavs were running out there most of the games. The other thing is the Mavericks didn't have any big men. Well, the Spurs can get you big with Duncan in there, but they can go small with Leonard and Aldridge. Popovich has so many combinations along the front line, and I thought that where Oklahoma was able to take advantage of Dallas and you had the big men for the Thunder, Cantor and Adams have big, big series, they were not going to be as successful here in this round. The number has come to seven and a half points. It's come down to seven and a half. I don't get the price at all. Listen, after you get smacked on San Antonio's home floor by 32 points in game number one, after you fall to two and five against the spread in your last seven games in San Antonio, we're talking postseason games. I don't know how this line's only seven and a half points. Obviously, the public, I think they're going to jump on the thunder. I think that would be a mistake. I think San Antonio is the play here. I think that everybody thinks, you know, because of how the Thunder dominated Dallas in the last round, that this is a good team. The Thunder is not that good of a team. They're just an average team on the road. They were just an average team post-All-Star break. They're a two-man squad with Westbrook and Durant. Granted, you know, 98% of the NBA would like to have a two-man squad built around those two guys. But the Spurs, their depth, and the fact that they're rested, that's why I like them laying the seven and a half points here. Again, I'm doing this video report before midnight on Sunday. Wouldn't be surprised to see this line go up to eight, but I would still go with San Antonio. Again, I like the Spurs. I love them in game number one. I like them here in game number two, but I just like the Cavaliers-Hawks game a little more. And that's why it's the half price play of the day as my best bet today as I continue my NBA role. That'll do it, guys. I wish you well. Uh, nothing on the baseball card very appealing here today at all. I'll talk to you again on Tuesday when we do this one more time.